is my presentation on WordPress virus detection. Uh, oh gosh, the mouse doesn't work. I'll click over here maybe. Okay, what is WordPress? WordPress is a blogging tool that has something has about 131 billion views a month. Uh, for this reason, a lot of times this is targeted by hackers uh, for outdated themes, plugins, and even with WordPress itself. And with that many views, there's it's bound to get hacked. I mean, oh, there's first time present. Oh, that's not where I go. Okay. Script optimization items. I'm going to go over the big O notation. I'm going to go over IO Durant. Some, some, some simple ways to get the most out of your regex. Some hash tables. Uh, differences between MD5. Uh, file size comparisons. And some basic profiling with NYT. With dev, devel, NYT prof. Firstly, what is the big O notation? The big O notation is basically a uh, a theory thing based to measure how long it would take to go through either an array, uh, how long it takes to look up through an array, a hash table, binary trees, a uh, bunch of different things. And basically, basically to measure the accuracy of how long it takes to go through something. If you guys have questions, those are good too. Uh, big annotation. Hash tables having the lowest lookup times are very beneficial when you're trying to exclude entries from your, from a, from your virus detection search. Um, basically, I gave two examples here of the top one showing the same lookup times as through an array, and then I gave the second value here showing you how to the fastest way, the, how you get the O1. I'm like doing a very bad explanation of this, but uh, if you look up for a very specific value in hash table, you can get the value very, very quickly, which is fantastic when you're doing searches, when you have blacklists or whitelists, and you want to look them up instant, instantaneously. Uh, I gave the IO notation up here, the speed difference. Uh, N being the size of the array or the size of the table. If I'm going too fast, somebody stop me because I don't know how fast I'm going. I have Durant. What is a Durant? Uh, a Durant is a di is a directory entry. Uh, Linux uses them for the hierarchy of files for directories, basically. Each durant maps an inode uh, to a file name and a parent directory. Uh, what what makes in Perl IO, IO durant good? IO durant basically uses the read dir to open a directory. It gives you the name, the inode, and even the type of file it is. While just standard Perl open directory just gives you just the file the file names within that. It doesn't give you the, and when you're using, especially when you're looking up like through a search, if you can sort the files by inode number, you can get something like a 30% increase because you don't have to be searching around on your hard drive like this. You can just straight like this. And that's incredibly fast. I gave an example of iodorant. Basically, the first and the first part up here is using the standard Perl, and then um, here's the data dumper for the first part and the second part. The first part here is just reading through the directory and printing each entry, and it's closing the directory. The second one's going through using the IO Durant from up here to read it, and then using a data dumper. How it's printing the name, type, inode. A little bit, a little bit, all the information you can use to make your script a little faster later. Russell. So, say you wanted to, I, I, you might cover this later on in your talk, but 
say you wanted to access the content and say run an MP5 hash on that for comparison, how would you do that with IO Direct? Actually, I'm going to go. You, you can, you very well can. I'm going to go over that. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> yep, I actually go over MD5 hash, uh, MD5 with both a blacklist and a whitelist later. Uh, IO Direct versus file find rule. File find rule is a really common one people you like to use online. Uh, the difference in code isn't hugely different. I mean, I mean, the code is hugely different. The time, though, you're not saving that much time. What you're really getting out of the difference is you're being able to get the, the stats, the inode number, the, the type of file it is. So, I mean, so you can skip named pipes, you can skip sockets. I mean, you obviously don't, aren't going to be opening those files to look for hacked files in those. Why do we need to look through them? It's just a really nice way. Uh, Pretty self, I don't know, not self explanatory. Should I go over this? Does anybody need to have questions about it? Um, so, the optimization of mm -hmm. this, was it to sort the files by inode? This doesn't do any sorting yet. It's going to be do sorting later. This is right now, it's just go, all right now is just the quick show you the speed. There's going to be a hash table. This is going to build a hash table with the stats later. So this, all this is doing is building the file list for you. If you're using the inode by itself, IO to rent, I was just showing the speed difference. It's not that much faster. I mean, it's 0 0.03 seconds when you're scanning 42,000 files. So it's not that much faster. Where you really get the speed is when you start comparing, getting the, the stats information. Regex. Uh, before we can really figure out how to make your regex better, I have to explain how regex works. Um, okay, so regex, how regex works is basically goes character by character. If you have your string or your value, whatever you're looking up, it basically has to go through your line, your file, whatever you're doing, it has to go character by character until it matches your regex string. Um, this. Sorry, let's see. Okay, break catch until it's okay. So if you start using things like greedy uh, dot star in regex, it goes to the end of the line and then it counts backwards until it still matches the end line. That can be very good or it can be very bad depending on how you how long your line is. Or if you're stuck an entire file into one scalar, it can be really bad. You generally want to use something like consider using lazy over that, which is dot star question mark. Especially when you're dealing with minified files like the JS files or CSS files. They like to be on one line. So the best way is to get the most out of your regex. Uh, regex compiles your reg if you want to compile your regex at first, you can declare that in a QR method at the in, into a scalar. Just my scalar equals QR and then your regex string. If you do this at the before, like your loops or your if statements, you can actually compile it compi you can compile it at runtime, and that gives you quite a bit of speed bonus. Um, and it also doesn't have to decompile, which is really good too. Uh, when using wildcards, of course, use lazy. I mean, use, consider using lazy. If, or even better, if you can, give it a range, something like the square bracket, 1, comma, 300. It actually helps a lot when you start and scan through all your files, especially when you're using like, web hosting based. Those JS files can be a real killer if you have like. 50 lines on one line. Range yeah, you're right. I was thinking that in my head as soon as I said square bracket. I was like, wait. <sighs> my bad. Oh, 
Let's see. Did I give an example? Yeah, so here's an example I used. Uh, it says my term you're going to lead through searching for QR and then users define the user environment. If, don't, if you guys can, don't ever use system calls. Like, well, th I can't say don't ever because tar is better in a system call. But generally, if you can use, write everything in Perl, it's much faster. If you have to run a system call, it has to go through layers to get to it and s slows down your script. And you'll also be ridiculed by Perl people. <laughs> Pretty common. Oh, okay, let's go over read speeds. Uh, how do you get the most out of your read speeds? Generally, when people write code to write to read a file, they generally start with the open file handle and they just use their file. If you want to get more out of your read speed, you can start adding layers. This is the binary layer, and you can add some buffering to it. And that gets you up to 40 megabytes. But if you still don't feel like that's enough speed, you're going to get lim you're going to you can uh, load it into a scaler file slurp does, I believe. And basically just slip it into this scaler here using the same thing. Uh, People have reported 1.5 gigabytes in speed. I, my hard drive doesn't go that fast, so I don't have quite that speed. But here's a link, somebody online sh telling they have that. They have their own bunch of code showing exactly the benchmarking. Hash tables. We went over that a little bit earlier, but I want to explain exactly why hash tables are so good. Uh, in the beginning notation, it basically says a look time of 0, 1 uh, versus the arrays which have 0, or O and N, I mean not 0, O and N. And if you were to try and sort your arrays, then let's see, if you have sorted your arrays and use specific. Okay, so if you're trying to pull a specific, ele a specific uh, element or specific information from your array, you generally have to look it up. You have to search through the entire array and then do like an if statement. If the if an array has this meets this condition, then do that. Well, in a hash, you can say I want just to look up this condition. You completely skip this entire loop. It's quite a bit faster, especially when you're looking through a 200,000 files, for example. Uh, SHA-132 versus MD5 versus file size comparison. I also go over XXHash. Uh, we, we at Bluehost use MD532, which is the second fastest, well, third, third if you include the file size, because we're going to be citing the file. Uh, basically has a 0.33 gigabytes. Uh, I tried convincing Bluehost to use XXHash, but we actually have a ton of other MD5 stuff, so they thought it was going to be counterproductive if we were to use two, two scans, both MD5 and XXH, so we're just sticking with MD5. But you guys can do whatever, however you like. I personally prefer XXH, it's really fast. And I mean, if, if you guys don't need accuracy, file size is perfect, just based on file name. I'm like, it, it's incredibly fast. Basic example of how to use Digest MD5. There's your, here's your example. Let's see. Um, let's see. So once you've created your list of files, now this is just a very small array because I have to get a big screen. <laughs> so uh, then you're going to create your two lists here. I usually put them in configuration files, but this is so I can have on one one screen for you guys. And then you go basically go through your you basically go through your array line by line through every file, and then you're going to open it up with the read speed. This is 40, 45 megabytes. So this is the shorter version, and then you're going to put it into the, your MD5 hash, generating that here. It's going to remember it into the scaler, 
It's going to then check your whitelist. If it's in your whitelist, it's going to just skip it. If it's in your blacklist, however, it'll print it right to your screen. You can, you can have it deleted, you can have it whatever you want to do. It really depends on how you want to work with that. Basic profiling. Uh, Devel NYT Prof is one of the most popular. Does anybody know what NYT stands for? New York Times. It, it does, exactly. New York Times. Uh, profiling allows us to figure out what in our script is being the slowest, what's being the fastest, what actually needs to be worked on. In my code, I found that the slowest things in, in the script is the read speeds. And they, 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 well, they're not necessarily the slowest, but they take the longest, the read speeds. Uh, I can scan some like 31 WordPress sites in two minutes. It's pretty fast. Uh, and then also the regex. Uh, basically, it, once you've installed Devel NYT, they give you two really pretty commands. You can run this command here, and then your script name, and you can, it basically gives you a little dump file. You can then run the NYT prof HTML, and it'll generate you an HTML page, which I'll show you on the next slide. Uh, I don't know, it's about 1,200, I think, is a, in a WordPress installation. But they're, and the worst I've seen, not including cache files, around 75,000. <laughs> so, and if we can start including cache files, I've seen them in the millions, like 3 million before, so really can't count those. We, I like <laughs> exactly, exactly. Here's a basic uh, page. It basically tells you exactly how long it takes. I'm like, this is scanning a lot more than uh, 200,000 files, I think. I was just trying to see the, what I got the most out of. It took t t two minutes to scan the files. It took about 63 seconds to read the files. So about three minutes overall. It's pretty good. I think I was scanning 600,000 files. I don't remember exactly. And it was like just under a gig. So it's pretty fast. Tom? Yeah. Two things that I love looking at when I'm looking at MIT Prof is the number of iterations that a particular call is being made, and then of course the total amount of time. Just usually with those two things, you can drill down right to where your problems are, and, as you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a cool I, oh, I agree with that. I has literally saved. I first time I created the script, it took me. It I was running through the script. It took would sometimes take 84 minutes. Th that same script, based on the NYT Prof and some of the developers that helped me at Bluehost, I actually get down the script down to four minutes. So, yeah, definitely, if you guys can, always profile your code. Obviously, you can't always do that, but if you can, it's highly recommended. Here's the another scan. Once you've clicked on one of your one of those uh, lengths of time. It'll actually show you exactly line by line what is taking the longest time in your code. Not buffering the files and not passing the files to passing passing buffered references instead of the buffer. It's way faster. So copies. Instead of making copies of every file to pass it, then scan that. Just pass the reference. That's a ton faster. I think it saved me 40 seconds all that cell. I mean, if not 40 seconds, 40 minutes, I think. I was like, wow. WordPress. Now that I've got how to optimize the script, we, let's see, what does it say? We can go over what the script is going to do. So we don't know. Okay. Uh, this is basically going to detect, well, this is basically going to go through and look for all your WordPress installations and scan through them. 
This assume I mean automatically we're going to assume you have more than one site because the script's fast enough to handle it. Uh, let's see. So this here, this is your main, this is ma the main subroutine, team, whatever you want to call it. You're going to call this. It's going to go through and find all of your files. That's the first thing it does. And this is the I/O. This is going to be what's handling all your I/O. IO direct stuff. So it's going to go through, find a directory. It's going to rerun. It's going to go through the list. If it's a directory, it's going to re open, rerun the same subroutine on that directory, adding another level. Uh, actually, doesn't add another level in this so in this subroutine. But basically, goes through and opens every directory, rerunning the same subroutine if it finds a directory on that directory, and pushes it to your list of files. All right. Uh, this is a bunch. Of, these are a few of the MD, MD5 files we of the MD5 stuff. Uh, I actually created a script. I put it on GitHub right up here. MD5 sum. It does the same thing as MD5 sum does normally. I have it written in Perl, so you have a little recursive option, which you don't normally have. At least I haven't been able to find in the normal MD5 sum. It uses IO to rent. You guys can look that over that script if you guys want in your spare time. Uh, it actually will even create you more or less this file here for your convenience. It appends to a list.pm file. If you use the dash h flag, it even does it in a hash for you. So very little effort on your parts. So now to get the actual reading from that whitelist into implemented, in, let's see, yeah, we're using iodorant in this. So what you do is you're going to read through your list of files. You're going to, of course, put put your uh, whitelist into a configuration file because we don't really don't want to see 10,000 lines in your main script or however many lines you have in there. So you're going to go read through the list. It's going to shift your directory. Um, if it's a socket, if it's sorry, if it's a socket or a name pipe, it's going to skip those. You're obviously not going to be uh, reading those. If it's a directory, it's going to run it again, then skip it. You're not going to be scanning your directories. Uh, it's then going to create your file path here. It's going to, if it's a binary file, it's going to skip it. Obviously, images they're not going to be hacked. Uh, if they are. They're actually going to not be binary files anymore. They're going to be text files. We register as text files. So this is, from what I've found, is pretty accurate. Uh, and I've I've easily scanned over 3,000 accounts. So like from what I can tell, it's pretty accurate. Again, we're going to go through the open the file. We're going to then digest creating the MD5 hash again. And we're going to skip the file if it's uh, if it's on our whitelist, and then we're going to close the file, and we're going to. Uh, I have bad code here. I don't not I don't have the stat line here. Basically, you're just going to stat it, create an array, name stats, and we're going to push the stats to a hash table here. Any questions on that? What? Yay, white lists. <laughs> uh, I think we read this one. Hold on. No, just kidding. Basic same example. Sorry, seems like a useless slide. Okay, here's a basic, a small, very small portion of a combination of what I found online and some things we found at Bluehost. Just a very small portion. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we did, I did put it on one 
one scaler here. Simply for the screen slide, you can put it on, you can use the slash X slag and put them on multiple lines if you want. You can build your hash however you, uh, you can build your scaler however you want. This is just easiest for the slide. Again, yeah, that's a very small portion of what we have at Bluehost. Like, I don't think some of this we aren't even using. I found it online. Huh? Go on. Have you found any difference between the performance using one large regular expression like this versus several small ones? Yeah, several small ones, in my opinion, has been quite a bit faster. But uh, this is actually, we actually, what I do is we actually have each hash on its own, or each regex on its own line, and we go, we cycle through them through an array. And it's actually quite a bit faster. Putting on one line, from what we can tell, from what I have tested, and through Net Devel Prof, has been quite a bit slower. So it's based on this uh, system. Obviously, it could be faster. Depends on your situation. What was your question? I was just going to say. So just every time that you find a new, a new type of hack in there, you just add it into the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all done manually, unfortunately. But I mean, it's. We've, uh, we, ex we sell the product, I mean, we sell, cl customer we clean customers' accounts all the time, so that's something we, we can update regularly without it much hassle. Okay, uh, let's go over some simple ways to keep your WordPress site from getting hacked. So that's actually something really useful. Uh, let's see, check your files, permissions, ownerships, pretty self-explanatory, especially on a Linux-based system. Uh, if you're not modifying your code for long periods of time, there's a line here, define, disallow file edit, which you can use in your wp-configuration file. It helps a lot. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily do the, by itself, doesn't necessarily do the best work, but it does, from what I can tell, very well by itself. Another thing you do is a, a Apache module called Mod Security. It does have side effects though, so it's not necessarily the best option by itself by default. But if you want to look into that, it can actually be pretty helpful. It helps prevent scripts from trying to uh, basically brute force your WordPress credentials, things like that. Uh, if you, if there are any plugins that are asking, requesting write permission, or you know, taking your files, obviously you want to research that and plug in, make sure it's legit. Uh, don't use admin as your username. <laughs> it's a good password though, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah. Something interesting is password exclamation mark is more checked on than password on certain brute force attacks. So, brute, uh, password exclamation mark. Yeah. Something interesting I found online. Psychology. Psychology. I'm so secure. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing you want to do is you want to back up your data regularly. Well, especially the MySQL database, because obviously the scan you're going to be doing doesn't scan doesn't go through the MySQL database. It could, but this iteration we're showing doesn't do anything like about that. Uh, so you definitely want to back up your data. Uh, also, you want to monitor. Check it on a daily basis. You can probably what's up here this thing as a cron job, how it runs once a day or something. Probably you probably may not even have to run it that often, but I would recommend at least once a day. See. Oh, good. I have like an actual example of the stats. Basically, this is the approximately a full version of your script going to look like. It's pretty small compared to the version I have. But basically, what it does is going to get through, go through, get your list of files, and it's, at the getting this list of files actually stats your files here. Uh, Setting those files gets you the I know. I mean, gets you a bunch of information. The file permissions, 
I mean, you guys know what stat gets, right? Okay. Uh, then you can start comparing these files to MD5. Here's the way to sort through your list by inode number, right there. And that basically gives you just that line alone. I have noticed a 30% increase in speed. Some of our system architects also have suggested that to me. Works wonders. Uh, and again, just the whitelist there. Pretty sure I'm coming up on the end of this. Let's see, how long do I have? Oh, good. Still have. Yeah, not, not good, not good. <laughs> we'll ask lots of questions. Please do. Last time I presented this, I didn't have. I was missing 10 slides, and it took me 45, 40 minutes, really. So I figured that would have helped. Some helpful links. Uh, questions? Sorry, I didn't do it quite as long as I wanted to. Yes? So you're, are, you're with the hosting provider, and basically you're scanning your customers' WordPress sites to see if they've been hacked? Yeah. Uh, what, can you give us statistics on how, how many sites get hacked? A ton. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, a lot. Uh, I think we do between 20 and 50 site, site cleanups a day, I think. I think that's what this is statistical. A day. And we, uh, I mean, we're a large hosting company, though, so Bluehost. We actually will actually update their WordPress for them, their plugins. We'll do quite a bit more. The, the, if they get hacked, we'll actually clean their account for up to 30 days. So, I mean, if they get rehacked, we'll figure out why they got hacked and try and fix that. So, so when you fix it, you got stop the hacks on that particular site? Uh, rephrase your question, I don't understand. When you update the WordPress plugins? And usually, that's usually the 90% of the time they get hacked is because of bad, out of date plugins. If you, just simply updating the plugins, the themes, and the WordPress version alone, 90% of the time, it, that's all it requires. You won't be hacked again for a while. Like, until a new hack, the new hacker finds new exploits. Do you have Jay. Any what? Do you have any blacklisted plugins that you blacklist? There is a uh, blacklist we've been trying to maintain on that, and that's, it, there is a, there's also a public list we've been trying to work with, uh, like the VPN go daddy and dream host on this, uh, and it's uh, there's actually. There's a public list that WP Engine publishes of uh, blacklisted plugins on their service, and it's about the same. Uh, but that's only a list of like, there's really only a list of like 20 or 30 right now. In our experience, t Tim Thumb PHP pops up. Uh, it does, it does. <laughs> that's one of the most common ones to get hacked. Yes? So, are, how do your clients know that they've been hacked? Usually the symptoms are so when they go to their site it says hacked by so and so. They're very public about being hacked. <laughs> I mean So have you guys noticed any because I, I picked up on this a lot. I we I managed about hundred and twelve WordPress instances. Mm -hmm. Um we've started seeing hacks. There the, there are these SEO hacks where they could if they would get in, they'll inject some SEO copy code for links for like Viagra uh, or what or and it's actually hidden, so uh, well, actually if you want to check out cheftables.net on your Android with uh, Firefox, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> there are these hidden SEO, and we've talked to them and said, you know, hey, do you know your site's hacked? Oh, no, it's not. It's fun. You know, they have no idea. And I've actually done a list of about 4,500 sites that have this hack that they don't even know. Yeah, they call, those, uh, they call them the pharma hacks. Yeah. So they're pretty popular in WordPress. And uh, there's uh, sites like Security will do pre scans for those. And they will Security.net. Yeah. So, I mean, right now, we're using, I mean, there's a pre a tool, I and mean, we're using WordFence. Well, again, I don't know if you've used it. Yeah, I've used that one. WordFence gets hacked a lot in our instance. So, oh, really? yeah, it's one of those that get hacked quite often. Just something. Uh, yes, so the answer to your question, yes, we do notice that often. We, uh, I recommend using something like, again, the cron, a daily basis of scanning all your customers. That'd probably help with that. Obviously, yes. Um, do you proactively scan for plugins? Uh, I don't think, yes, all right. 
we have a product C scanner that does that. So, um, yes. Do you uh, use anything similar to fail the ban at, after a certain number of attempts? It just locks them out or something. Uh, I think Mod Security does that. I'm not entirely sure though. So, I, uh, I don't. Me personally, I don't do anything with that. So, maybe not. I don't know. It's not my thing. Wouldn't mind if it was. Russell. Rhetorical question of awesomeness. Uh, could you hypothetically use these methodologies to um, do more beyond just a WordPress? Absolutely. Actually, we scan a lot more than just WordPress on our hosting. We do Joomla, Drupal, Magento has something like 20,000 files for each installation. We do... Uh, there's a bunch of forums we search. I mean, we whitelist tons of files based on the MD5. But, yeah, way more than just WordPress. WordPress is just a very specific target for the day. So I, I, I'm not sure I quite understood. The whitelist is basically you're scanning a clean installation and... The, what the whitelist does is basically MD5 all your files for a clean installation and basically put it on their whitelist. Uh, you can white, obviously whitelist the files later, before, generally before you go public with, with your site or something. And then you'll have a default version of all your files. You won't have to worry about them. Uh, especially since I gave a MD5 some scripts you guys can use, just using a dash R and dash H flags to get the hash. It builds a hash for you in text and uses it recursively. So you can just get all your files instantly. Uh, no, we just have a mass whitelist for everyone. <laughs> uh, which is why we actually... It's, not, it's MD5, so I mean, if you have one character difference, it's not going to have the same whitelist. It's obviously not going to be the same. Which is why we also we don't use file size comparisons. We use the MD5. Yeah, what it does is it scans for every file on the server or in that specific directory if you want. And uh, basically grabs every file. It doesn't just stop with just specifically WordPress files or Joomla files or anything like that. It grabs every file and then it goes through and checks the MD5 of every file. If it matches the whitelist, it removes it from your hash table of files to scan. Pretty simple. Like, man, sorry guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming out supporting me.